C.H. Spurgeon, the wonderful man of God, who was nicknamed Prince of Preachers, preached a sermon on the 14th of February, 1858, at the Music Hall, Royal Surrey Gardens. He stated, O oh, beloved, it is a sight that no human eye could endure. The sight of a heart really laid bare before one's own inspection would startle us almost into insanity. But God sees the heart in all its bestial sensuousness, in all its wanderings and rebellions, in all its high-mindedness and pride. God has searched and knows it altogether. God sees all the heart's imaginations. He was preaching on the theme, God, the All-Seeing One. We must always be mindful of the fact that our God has eyes and ears. He is not like the gods who were mocked by the psalmist when he retorted to their idolatry in Psalm 135. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes they have, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. We should never live in a way that doesn't take the truth of God's ability to search the crevices of our hearts. Luke 12 verses 2 to 3 states, There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear of the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. There are some who live as if the deeds and sins they commit under the shadows are hidden from God. Cain epitomizes this kind of mindset. In Genesis 4, we see the episode of the first murder playing out between Cain and Abel. Filled with anger, Cain spoke to Abel his brother, and when they were in the field, he rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. He thought his actions were shielded from God out in the field. No doubt he had concealed his actions from his parents, but he was still being scrutinized by the all-seeing God. His mindset is made clear when God asks, Where is Abel, your brother? Instead of coming clean and confessing his misdeeds, he tried to hide his sin. This is how some people think and behave. God was watching Cain, and he is watching us as well. We must learn from Cain's situation. God is omniscient, and nothing lives outside his knowledge. But just like Cain had to answer for his sin, we will also have to answer for ours. There is coming a day when all deeds will be exposed, and some will be found wanting. Numbers 32 verse 23 states, but if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. We live in a society that is under heavy surveillance, but a highly skilled criminal can evade being captured by these cameras. If they studied the routes, they can find blind spots, even when they are recorded on camera if they are obscured, the forensic team will have a hard time identifying the culprit. God's view cannot be evaded. We encounter another story in the Bible of individuals who thought their sins were not seen by God. It is a very sad story. We should read and receive the warning of waning characters. Ananias and Sapphira wife and husband, sold a piece of land and brought only a portion of the money to Peter. From the story, this was well in their right to do, as the apostle said to him, While it, the land, remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it, the money, not at your disposal? Acts 5 verse 4 The issue that got this couple into trouble wasn't the money they kept back, but it was the lie they told. 
They were doing something that seemed generous, but their hearts were beguiled by Satan. Ensuing from their hearts being filled by the devil was their lie to the Holy Spirit. We all know how that story ended for both of them. The lie they conjured in secret was done in the hearing and sight of God. God sees and he keeps record. How can men know this and live in ways that displease God? It is an unfathomable reality. Those of us who are under God's grace must be swift in seeking his forgiveness. Because if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9 God scrutinizes the heart and as Spurgeon says, even the imaginations of the heart. The first three verses of Matthew 6 are prudent to our discourse. They give a balance of perspective of how we should live both in secret and in public. The truth is that there are some things that should be done with as much veiling as we can. Our public life should not be used to bring attention to our righteousness, so Jesus warns. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. This is not a healthy practice for the sons and daughters of God. God doesn't need us to show off our righteousness so that others can lord us. He continues to point out that even our charitable acts are best down away from the prying eyes of spectators. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. The fact that they are called hypocrites tells us that the true intentions of their hearts are not to meet the needs of those in need. They are not giving from a heart of true benevolence for their fellow men. As followers of our Lord in pursuit of righteousness, we should not be hypocritical, declaring one thing in public and having questionable motives in our hearts. God sees, and he is taking record. Remember Hebrews 4 verse 13 says, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we have to give account. When we do the right thing in secret, God keeps record of that as well. Okay, love is made naked and open to the eyes of God. Matthew agrees with this author and states, But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. I want us to know that God is not a disciplinarian Father, who is only watching over us to see the bad things we do in private. He is also looking and recording the things that we do that are righteous and pleasing to him. I believe this is a massive, massive problem for believers. They believe God only watches the bad things they do. No, no, no. God watches all things. But I don't know what it is in human nature that we tend to sway at the idea that God only sees and keeps records of our shortcomings. But if the truth be told, every time you do something pleasing to God, he is watching you with a smile. If he wasn't, how else would he be able to say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Let us live our life with this in mind, to love others, not for other people to praise us, but because it pleases God. Let us reject sin because God is watching. In all cases, he judges us in the place that no one can see. He looks at our hearts. The misgivings of the soul are before his eyes, but the expressions of love are also before his eyes.